We bumped into our dear friends the hornbills again. They actually it didn't fly too far away from where we were. They just went straight through the block and then landed on Philemon's cut line. Hello birdies. Oh, their wind is just ruffling their feathers, but unfortunately they're still quite shy of us and they keep moving away, even though I creep up to them very, very quietly in the car. So I don't know how long this guy's going to hang around for, but hopefully it'll be long enough just to tell you all a little bit more about that. And it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. They always do this. Let's see if we can get it. That is so funny. Now, Jeff, you are, have got some great questions this afternoon. Thank you so much for sending them in. Jeff, you're wondering how does how did the Southern Ground Hornbill get its name? Hmm. I'm not sure. I wonder if it's just not because this particular gr uh, hornbill species just spends so much time on the ground. Like I said, uh, it, it does seem it forages quite a bit, though it, that's a trait of the hornbills. Here they are, just in front of the road. Don't you run away. Hey, hey, you, come back. It's just very sneaky over there, just about to disappear off to the road. Maybe if we just sit here, it'll come back out again and, and the rest will follow. So, Jeff, I'm actually not too sure about that. I have a bird book. Um, it's... I wish I had my my big bird book because that tells you where the names all originate but maybe it has something in here we can always have a look but I shall keep searching no I don't think it's got where the where they come from in this one okay well that's a pity but I'll look it up I'll have a look in my book and then I shall tell you tomorrow morning Jeff so make sure you watch the sunrise safari so that I can tell you exactly where it comes from but prehistoric looking birds don't you think Oh, you know what I did see yesterday is I saw some hardy dars flying off and it was a silhouette of them and it was so beautiful they reminded me of pterodactyls soaring through the sky well from what I've seen in the movies of course look at that very dramatically just disappearing off the screen oh no there's another one coming out too okay just in front of us the same spot so the others are sort of copying and that one now um, I can't quite see. I haven't had a good enough look at them. They haven't stood still for long enough to us to be able to identify which one's male, which one's female. But the female's got like a little blue patch on her throat. There's the, another one. And they don't have as much red. So I wonder if this one that's just walking away from us on the left is perhaps a female. And then on the right, maybe a male. I just saw it was he was exceptionally red. And that sort of loose skin around his face. I don't know if you would call it a wattle. Uh, I've forgotten the correct term there. But um, it's sort of much larger too. Come out of that grass. Look at them. Look at those massive feet. And we're going to go look at a hornbill track now too because I haven't seen one in quite some time. Now, Bob, you're wondering what do these hornbills eat? Well, uh, Bob, they are carnivorous. So they will feast on grasshoppers. They will feast on chameleons and other reptiles, snakes. They'll even feast on small mammals. So uh, chicks of birds, uh, they will also s snatch up anything really anything that moves that they can catch and it's quite amazing to watch them run after something and they sort of run through that long grass it's really amazing lifting those big legs off of the ground and their wings sometimes open up too let's see if we can go and get a, a closer look and they sort of stand there like this pecking down on the ground trying to catch what uh, something that they're looking for but they'll go to big fallen trees that's one of my favorite things to watch is when they do go to a tree and then they start pulling bits of bark off of it, stripping it back, trying to find a scorpion or perhaps a lizard like you just saw with Ellie that's, you know, hiding away. You know, don't catch me, hornbill, don't catch me. And then, well, the hornbills are going to catch you. See, and I'm going to go stealth mode again and try and roll in, but they are just walking up in front of us. But they move so quickly. And then I'm, as we look driving here, I'm going to look for a really nice hornbill track. But I think they're... They're in the road, but there we go. One's got its head down on the grass. I wonder if it spotted anything. What did you see there? Nothing? Nothing in particular. But remember that massive grasshopper that we saw being devoured by a, a hornbill the other afternoon? Now, they would love something like that, and they'd be able to eat something uh, of that size a lot easier than a, a yellow-billed or a red-billed hornbill would be able to. And it's a very clever technique that they use when they are out hunting, searching for potential prey. I love how they sort of flush through the grass, almost doing uh, a very old-school army sweep. 
and they'll move through and if something is flushed out to the left then hopefully there's another hornbill waiting in anticipation and can snatch it up so in their own way they're they're like a food party too but just of southern ground hornbills because they like i said they just chase their food from one side to the other and someone is bound to collect it but they're very curious they must i think they must be very intelligent it always looks like there's a lot going on that they're trying to process i think if a horn, the southern ground hornbill had to be a person, I would say that they'd be chartered accountants. I don't know, they always just look so serious. Sorry to all of those of you who are chartered accountants. <laughs> right, let's look at 